So, how many of you spend time thinking about how you think? Okay, awesome. So, how many of you are aware that your mindset affects everything you do, everything that you are, whether you realize it or not? And how many of you believe that you have control over your mindset? So, are you happy with the way things are going in your life? Do you realize that you create your own reality? So the interesting thing is, is that the way that our brains process information, focus is extremely key. We receive about 11 million bits of information per second. Think about it, all of the things that are in the room are being processed in our mind. Yet we only consciously process 126 bits per second. So what does that mean? You are your focus. Focus is the most important thing that you can do in order to begin to train your mindset. The thing that you spend our time looking at, the music that you listen to, the media that you consume, and the thoughts that you have going on in your head create your mindset. Now, as you see from this amazing slide here, you are receiving all of this information, right? And it's telling you the things that you should be buying, how you should be feeling, how you should be interacting. And most of the time, you are not your thoughts. You are the thoughts of the things that you consume. So how many of you say, oh, I don't want to be late? And you find yourselves late. Or I don't want any more bills. And you find more bills coming in. Or some of you who are single, I don't want to date jerks. And all of a sudden, here comes all these jerks. <laughs> Well, the interesting thing is, is, our unconscious minds do not process a negative. This is huge. Meaning, when you tell your unconscious mind not to do something, you're effectively telling it to do something. Meaning, the language that you use on top of your focus is incredibly important. You see, our bodies are a robot designed to do what the computer, the mind, tells it to do. And your language is the key, it's the code. So, how is your language? Interestingly enough, the words that we use not only define the world that we have, it will define the world that you will receive. I'm very aware of this because I grew up in an environment and a life that was actually not that great. When I was three weeks old, my mother abandoned me. I grew up in a home full of violence, and the reality is, is I started to project that into my life. I believed that no one wanted to be around me, that I wasn't smart. Who could want to be? My mother left me. However, when I started to understand the way that the mind works, and when I really started to understand my purpose, I realized that everything that happened to me in my life was created for a reason. Because I am here to help ignite and inspire individuals. And every single hardship that I've had, when I looked at it the right way, I realized was all of the tools that I needed to be me today. You name it, it's happened to me. When I was growing up, I was called accident prone. And I consistently had accidents. From falling off of trees and splitting my head to playing soccer in the house, which I should not have done. And Time and time again, I would create accidents because in my life, the people labeled me as accident prone. When I was 24 years old, I was riding my bicycle, and at that time in my life, I was not happy. To be quite honest, my focus was on death and gloom. I just found my father, and he was passing away from cancer. I wasn't happy in my job, and I'd just broken up with a boyfriend. And if I can realistically say, the thoughts in my life were not happy, positive, and true. Well, lo and behold, I was hit by a car, I flatlined, and I lost all feeling in my left side. That was about 19 years ago. And I, again, became my focus. I had best care. I went to the University of Chicago, the Rehabilitation Institute. I was told that I would never get any better, that the spinal injury that I had from my L4 to my S1 would not repair. And again, I actualized that. I went to every pain medication doctor, 
At one point, I was on 13 different medications three times a day. I was on test trials for Oxycontin time release, Dilaudid, and Norco. And then I had a doctor look at me and say, young lady, this is it for you. You're never gonna get better. If anyone knows anything about me, that's all I needed to know. I was like, I'm never gonna get better. I'm about to get better. So what I did was, and I don't advise anyone, is I took all the medication, I threw it down, and I started this whole new way of thinking. Wanting to understand my mind. Because if the body can recreate new stomach lining in, what, six weeks, I can recreate my life and my thinking. And I started to realize that the thoughts and the music and the things that I listened to not only affected how I held myself, but the way people received me. The interesting thing about communication is that only 7% of how we communicate is with our words. Just 7%. 38% is tonality, and 56% is physiology, your body language. So if the thoughts in your mind are basically a code to how you feel, and you are walking into a situation, you are giving out a signal if you're confident. You're giving out a signal if you're strong. So the words that we use matter. This is basically life events. Speaking of focus, so I'll dig into this a little bit. Our life experiences, your first kiss, news, the election, things that you consume go into your system and then they create how you feel, right? And how you feel is your behavior, how you behave, how you interact, all of those things. How many of you have watched a television show, true crime, and you kind of feel a little bit jumpy? You feel a little bit uneasy? How many of you have noticed that, right? So then, conversely, you put on a comedy, and you start laughing, and you feel better. You determine what you feel. You get to determine if you turn on the news. You get to determine if you are reading certain material, if you're on social media. And what I would suggest and advise you to do is to choose very carefully what you spend your time in. If you're swimming around in a pool of negativity, you are going to receive negativity in your life and you're going to create it. So, focus is first. It creates your state in your mindset. 90% of what we do is unconscious. That's huge. And our unconscious minds don't know the difference between something that is real, something that is remembered, and something that is imagined. That's huge. If your mind doesn't know the difference between something that is real, remembered, and imagined, and you constantly have thoughts about things not working out for you, about you not feeling confident, about you not feeling secure, that's what you're going to create in your life. However, if you spend your time on thoughts and words that are positive, that are empowering for you, that is what you will get in your life. It is that simple. Not easy, simple. This is very odd. <coughs> okay, so, how do we go back? Your language, what we say matters. It's your computer code. How many of you are really aware of the language that you use? So, I want you to try this exercise. Say in your mind, I am going to try to enjoy my day today, and I'm going to try to achieve my business results. How does that feel to your system? Does it feel strong? Does it feel you're going to make it happen? Great, now try the second. I'm going to enjoy my day today, and I hope to achieve my goals and my dreams. Sounds a little bit better on your system, yes? A little stronger? So if you try the third one, I am going to enjoy my day today, and I want to achieve my goals. Sounds a little bit stronger, correct? Now, read the last one and feel it in your system. I am going to enjoy my day today, and I will achieve my goals. 
It literally is that simple, but it does take a lot of work. As much as I talk about a positive mindset, at times I don't have it all the time. I'm a human. And that's the perfect part about being a human, is that you get to work on things consistently. Because our language is so important. It creates and it also has you on your focus. How often have you said to yourself, oh, I want this new car, I want a Tesla. Now before, you never saw Teslas. And then the moment you decide you want something, you see it every single place. Have you noticed? What happened? Your focus changed and your language changed. And then the way that the universe works, those things started to come to you. So I would invite you all to begin to really pay attention to what you're focused on. Play a game. Because that's what life is, it's a game. And because the world works in two ways, either you're at cause, for the things that happen to you in your life, or you're at effect. And if your mind doesn't know the difference between what's real, remembered, or imagined, play the game that you are at cost, that you're a player one, and watch how things change. Because when you're at effect, things are always happening to you. They're always coming at you. But when you're at cause, you're the creator. And it's just a game. There are a myriad of life challenges out there, but you determine the way that you want to play. So, the first thing to knowing how to play the game to win is to know where you want to go. You need to have a place <coughs> in line because if you go where the flow, you go where the flow takes you. So know where you want to go. Now of course, life is going to happen, and you're going to get off course. And like anything, you have a GPS that will get you back on course. But if you don't know where you're gonna go and you're just idly driving by, you'll get what life gives you. Write your goals down. Why? The reason the way the brain works is when you write something down, you tap into your reticular activating system, which is your goal getter. Your conscious mind is your goal setter the 10% that we use, and your unconscious mind is the goal getter. That's the thing that brings things to you. And when you write things down, you're 50% more apt to get them than if you do not. It's just something that happens with that goal getter. By writing it down, you trigger it, and it wants to create that to come to you. So that's extremely important. Begin to write your dreams down. And I would also <laughs> encourage you that if there's something that you have planned ahead, Write it out working for you the way that you want it. Most individuals have anxiety because they are thinking about things working out the way that they don't want it to. Why would you create that? Just imagine that it works out to your highest benefit. Focus on what you want. It's extremely important. We get what we focus on. The things that you constantly see, you will see more of. When you start to create health and happiness and wealth as the things that you're consistently focused on, they will come into your life. I have dramatically and drastically changed my life using these tools, and many people do consistently as well. Say it the way you want it. Because your body is a robot designed to do what your language, the computer code, wants you to do, be very precise with your words. Eliminate try. You're going to do it. There is no trying to breathe or trying to make it. You're either going to do it or not. And I would invite you to be honest with yourself and use language that is supportive because, again, you are going to get whatever it is you put in, in that computer. And take action. Law of attraction, the biggest word is action. It doesn't matter how much planning, how much positive thought I have. If I don't get out and do it, it's not going to come to me. And I would suggest just taking that step. So, in life, 
the art of playing the game to win is you need to know where you want to go, focus on what you want, say it the way you want it, and take action. Thank you very much, and have a great day.